Hi, my name is Amy McClensey and I am the social emotional teacher at the elementary level at Radnor School District. And I'm Jackie Sanalupo. I'm the district behavior analyst. And today we're together with you to talk about creating motivators and rewards at home. So the first thing we really want to talk about is understanding what behavior is. So when we talk about behavior, whenever behavior occurs, um, we are always trying to escape or gain something. So for example, when we're talking specifically about schoolwork, um, your child, if, if they're not logging on, they're not completing their schoolwork, they might be trying to escape that schoolwork, that online instruction, or any demands basically throughout the day. So even the demand to just get up and get ready for the day. They may also be trying to gain access to something. So access to preferred activity, like playing video games, watching TV, or even just staying in bed. Um, they'd much rather engage in those fun activities than get online and do their schoolwork. Um, and they also may be engaging in some of these behaviors to gain access to your attention throughout the day because, or access to the attention of their peers, especially in this type of um, instruction now where they haven't been able to see their peers as often as they would like or as often as that they are used to. Um, in these situations, they might be engaging in more behaviors online or anything like that to gain that access to the, their peers' response. So when we look at how to address behaviors first, we wanna prioritize which behaviors we're going to address first. Um, we wanna pick one or two things to work on and break down the task as much as possible. So when we look at our schedules throughout the day, we look at, you know, maybe we get up in the morning, we get dressed, we brush our teeth, we sit down um, and eat breakfast, we get all our materials, log on and then engage in the class period. So we're breaking down all these things into steps. So if your child's having difficulty in their morning routine and then logging on and um, engaging in that participation online, what we wanna do is prioritize what is most important right now. So it might be that the most important piece right now is that they are able to log on to the computer and they're able to stay on there and sit and attend for maybe only 10 minutes right now. Um, whereas maybe the class period is going on for 40 minutes, but we want to make sure that we're breaking this down to maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We're meeting our kids where they're at um, and what they're, they're capable of doing right now and able to do without engaging in any challenging behaviors. We have to keep in mind that this instruction is a lot newer for, for most of us. Um, and so there's going to definitely be a learning curve. And even though your child may easily sit for a 45 minute presentation in the classroom, it might be a lot harder for them right now to do that online, especially with so many things going on around them. So what this means is that you're not gonna be able to address everything at once, and that is completely okay, because eventually we will get to that. We just wanna make sure that we're building that behavior momentum and your child is feeling successful at the beginning. Um, so, if you know you have a kid that they are struggling with their morning routine and then they're struggling with that logging on and paying attention we might want to make sure that they log on pay attention but you might have to assist them in that morning routine and getting them moving they might just not be able to do everything independently all at once um, another big thing is homework homework is another big stressor that we have so i think our main goal right now is to have them engaged in the instruction piece and doing the schoolwork and then if the homework is also another trigger, we just communicate that with your case manager or with your child's teachers to let them know that, you know what, we're really working on having, um, you know, my child sit right now and pay attention during the class period. We can't really focus on homework yet. Um, and your teachers are, are gonna be much, um, much more helpful that way and, and willing to work with you through that. And I like using, you know, oftentimes we use words like target behaviors because those are the things that you really want to think about. And Jackie said it perfectly, you know, when you want to pick what is that most important or most biggest barrier that you see right now and struggle that you're having and focus on that one first. Um, and like Jackie said, you're, we're here as your school team to support you along with your teachers. Um, and if your child um, qualifies for an IEP or 504, your special education teacher as well. So then the next step we really want to look at when we're talking about behavior is identifying reinforcers and rewards. We all work for reinforcement and for rewards on a regular daily basis, even if it's just um, myself getting up and going to work during the day, then I come home and I get to see my family, I get to have some free time for myself, things like that. 
um, whenever we're even just going into the grocery store. We're now looking to get food so we can have snacks and things like that. There's always small little rewards built into our day when we don't even notice it or don't realize that it's happening. So we wanna make sure that we're building that motiva motivation for our students um, and making sure that we're identifying something that they're willing to work for. So this one, we wanna make sure that we isolate out those reinforcers and make sure that they're specific to that schoolwork. So some examples might include that video game time, free time, um, ice cream for dessert. They can have their choice of where they go over the weekend or their choice of maybe game, if you're gonna play a game that evening, some free TV time anything like that, anything that works for your child. Every individual has different reinforcers. So one kiddo might love to play on the iPad, another kiddo might love to do puzzles. It's really specific for your individual child. So once you identify though what motivates your kids, what they want to work for, what they're willing to work for, you wanna make sure now that that is isolated out and that they can only have those tasks once they have completed um, whatever it is you've asked them to do. So looking back at some of those visual schedules that we talked about in our um, previous presentation, we want to make sure that they're checking all of those things off before they can have access to these preferred activities. We also really want to make sure that the reward that we're zoning in on is equal to or more powerful than what they are already getting. So for example, if your child is not um, engaged in the online instruction because instead they're watching YouTube on the computer, um, you want to make sure that the reward then is equal to or greater than YouTube. Because if you're saying you have to do all this work, you can't watch YouTube, and then at the end you can go for a walk, um, they're probably not going to be willing to do that because they're already getting the YouTube. They're already doing it while they're supposed to be doing their instruction. So what we're offering them is not uh, valuable enough. We really want to make sure it's more um, or equal to that YouTube or whatever it is they're trying to get. And one of the things that is important to note too is your rewards will consistently change. So, you know, we don't want to kind of streak that. And a lot of times at, at school, we work on, you know, creating reinforcement surveys or creating things like that to help students become engaged. So it's often having that conversation because you don't want your child to get bored if they're earning the same thing all the time. So having that opportunity to kind of change up your reinforcers can also help keep your child motivated. So we wanna make sure when we're talking about um, using some of those if then statements, so you have to complete this first and then you can have uh, whatever the reward is, we first wanna make sure that we're placing very clear expectations. We don't want any gray area because every kiddo is gonna find that gray area super quick and, and they're gonna use that um, as much as they can. So we wanna be very specific as to what they need to complete in order to earn that reward time. And then like we had just talked about, isolate out those rewards at first. This is the expectation. Once you complete that expectation, then you can have this. However, if you do not complete this expectation, the reward goes away and they will not have access to it until they come back and complete that expectation. We also wanna use visuals whenever possible. So some of those visual checklists, things like that to make sure that they're staying on track and they can see that they're getting closer and closer to that reward time. And then when you set those expectations, you really wanna make sure that they're realistic for your child. So some individuals might need a break after each task. Some individuals might need a break after each class period. Some individuals might be able to go the whole day or even the whole week before they get to cash in and earn something um, rewarding or reinforcing. You wanna make sure that whatever expectation you're setting for your child, it's realistic. And a big way you can see right from the beginning, if they're not meeting that expectation, then you might have to lower it at the beginning and then build back up to it. Again, this is very new for all of us. And so what your child may have done in the past um, when they were in person in school or what they might have done at home even, things are very different right now because our entire environment and our situation is different and this learning is newer for a lot of individuals. So we want to make sure that even if they've demonstrated some of these positive behaviors in the past, they may not be able to do it as fluently right now with virtual schooling. So if your child is struggling, you kind of want to scale back a little bit, set those expectations a little bit higher with knowing though that we are going to build back up um, to those higher level of expectations as they are successful. Um, I will tell you the majority of times when something is not working, when those reinforcers are not working and your child's refusing to complete their work, it's because either the, the reinforcer or the reward is not strong enough. 
So we talked about previously looking at, you know, watching YouTube or playing a video game or, you know, maybe engaging in a puzzle, something like that versus maybe taking a walk or maybe having some time to read. Some kids might absolutely love reading and video games are not valuable to them. Some kids might absolutely love video games and reading is not valuable to them. You wanna make sure that whatever you're using as your reward, not as a task, as your reward or your reinforcement time is very, very valuable and that your child is motivated and wants to work for it. The way you can really identify this is it's something that your child asks for all the time. It's something that they really want or if you bring it out and you show them they're, they're gonna have time to do that, they are so excited for it. Um, if they don't seem that excited, it's probably not going to be a reinforcer. The second piece of that is if the work is too hard. So a schedule won't work or a reinforcement won't work if what you're asking your child to do is too difficult for them or if it's too much for them. At that point in time, they, they, your reward starts to lose all of its value. If you're asking them to you know, work for 45 minutes where they really can only handle right now working for 15 minutes before taking a break, if we ask them to work for 45 minutes, then that reward is no longer gonna be worth it for, for them. Um, at this point in time, we're really looking at the need for skills as well as behavior. So we wanna make sure that we're not stretching that skill too far. You also wanna make sure that say you're giving your child a math worksheet and the math work is really complex. We wanna make sure that we are not Sorry about that, we had a little glitch um, with the technology. We're all still trying to kind of figure out some of these pieces. Um, so as I was saying, the other piece of this is that the task is too hard. So for example, if you're giving your child a, a math worksheet to do on their own and the math concept is a little bit newer and it's really, really difficult for your child, if you're asking them to complete 10 um, word problems on that math worksheet all by themselves, then it might be too difficult for them. And again, that reward isn't worth it because they're not able to complete that right now on their own. So we wanna make sure that we're breaking it down maybe to only a few problems or you're helping to provide that assistance um, or you're, you're having them reach out to their teacher and having their teacher work with them to provide some of that assistance to keep them moving. If in the moment though, you realize, you know what? You know, my, my kid's doing really, really well with this. They're doing awesome. I think my expectation could be higher. Do not change those expectations in the moment. You can always change them in the future. If you know, maybe you set it a little bit too low, we wanna make sure our students are set up for success. So if you set it a little bit too low at the beginning, that is completely fine. The next time you can just raise that expectation a little bit. What you don't wanna do is change the expectation in the moment because we're starting to work on building trust and building that, you know what, uh, this is my end of the bargain. I'm gonna hold that up. If you hold up your end of the bargain and complete your work. So if your child learns that, you know what, they did their math work so beautifully, and now you're gonna make them do reading before they can cash in and get that reward, even though you said they were gonna be able to have it after math, they're not gonna trust you in the begin after that. They're not gonna to continue to trust you. They're not gonna to continue to work um, for that item because they're gonna say, you know what, last time I finished it and I didn't get to cash in. So never change that expectation in the moment, just be ready to change it for the next time. So here's some examples of visual behavior charts and Amy's gonna go through them. So we've compiled some different uh, visual charts for you to use. Um, the first is a first them board. We've talked about this in a prior presentation as well. Um, this again is for students who require that short term uh, reinforcer or quick reinforcer after completing a task. So it starts as simple as first and then. So first let's do three problems, then you can take a two minute iPad break. And please know that breaks, rewards, if you're using technology, iPads, they get to build a Lego, does not need to be an extended period of time. You can have reward breaks if you're doing multiple that only are between two and five minutes long. You don't need to extend that every break needs to be a half an hour. Or every break needs to be such a large amount of time. It's really okay to have small little breaks if you're working at such a high frequency. And then the next one we have too is another 
first them board, but it really does list out some tasks that they need to complete. So then they see a larger list of things. So it's not just an one isolated activity or one isolated lesson. It's really looking at, wow, this is what all the things I have coming up. And it's for students, like I said, that need that immediate break, but also then can look at a whole schedule or look at a multiple or number of tasks to complete. These ones are great, token boards. Um, oftentimes at school, we use token boards and actually make tokens um, that are created with the things that students love. So things like Batman, Paw Patrol, you know, different things like that. So you can get creative with your tokens um, as well. This is a virtual token board that at times you may be seeing used on your virtual sessions. And again, they just slide them down and when they complete five things, then they earn something. Um, one of the biggest pieces I think in this one too is not only creating, you know, one expected or two expected behaviors, like I'll work for, I'll work for three minutes. Great job working for three minutes. I'm gonna move a token down. Then I'm gonna work another three minutes. Great, I'm gonna move another token down. Now when I've completed that token chart, I've worked 15 minutes before I got a break. And that's what Jackie was saying about building up that momentum. And again, it's important to either write or draw or use pictures so that they, your child, actually sees what they're going to work for. This is a more long-term type of reward system. So this is for filling a marble jar or filling, you know, you could use things like other containers. Sometimes we use those cotton puffs, you know, filling it with that, but something that's a little more long-term. So each time they do something, they get to drop a marble in the jar. And when the jar is full, then they can cash the jar in for their reward. And again, this is for an older student as well. Again, this is a task completion chart. Again, one of the most important things about this chart as well is that the actual student will check it when complete as well. So again, it's that feeling of I accomplished this, it was done. You know, when my task completion chart is um, complete, then I earn something. So oftentimes this is used with a lot of our older students and they can record the check marks that they've done this. And when it's all completed, then they can turn in their checklist. And I think that's one important thing too that, that Jackie and I uh, work together as well. When students cash in for things or they want to earn something, when they're using task check sheets or you know, different things like that, having them physically hand it to you and then you exchange the reward gives more meaning to that reward. So it's just like when we go to the store and we spend our money or we do things like that, it's a feeling that we have, right? That we're giving something to get something in return. So oftentimes it will work and you have to physically hand your ticket or physically hand your checklist to someone in order to get that back. So it's, it's a good exchange to remember. And this is for if you're having, you could have a, a weekly schedule, a longer term schedule as well. You would list out the tasks that you would want completed uh, for that week. And when the week has been completed, then they might earn a larger reward. So this again is a little more of an example of how you can create a weekly schedule of things they need to do in order to earn something at the end of the week. So some of our rules, you know, kind of our rules or, or things that we, we talk about is it should be, Jackie alluded to this earlier, it should be attainable. Your child should stretch to earn that, but they should be able to earn, start earning the reward. There's not going to be a lot of momentum to it if it seems too hard or it seems like something they're not getting. And like Jackie had said earlier, you can always adjust it. You can always change it to make it harder. You can always change it to say, ooh, that's a little too difficult and make it a little more attainable. But it always should be at first be attainable. They should have that feeling that if I do this, then I'm going to earn this. 
One of the other bullet points we talk a lot about is really trying to refrain from it being a consequence. Once they earn that star, that sticker, that token, that check mark, really try not to take that away from them for a different behavior or, oh, now you're not doing that, I'm going to take that back. The natural consequence that's built into a lot of these systems is that they're not going to earn it. In itself, it's built in to have a consequence without you taking it away. You want to reward them for the positives. You want to reward them for doing things that are positive and on task and motivating and things like that. You don't want to take that away. That again may struggle the relationship and Jackie alluded to the trust that you are trying to maintain and to create clear expectations. We've talked about that as well. Lastly, the chart should always be visible. So if you often tell your child the expectation, it's helpful to have a visual so that they can check it off. So if it's something that you're working on at school, if it's something that you're looking to change about how they're performing you know, on your virtual learning or the computer, have that visual chart close to them so that they can see it and how close they are to earning it. If you're working on sharing or taking turns or things like that, you may have your checklist in your playroom so that that's where the behaviors are happening, that you always want that chart to be visual during that time. And finally, Jackie and I just encourage you to keep going. Um, if your child masters that behavior or extinguishes it, meaning, you know, it kind of resolves and, and that's always our goal of any behavior, you can increase the number to earn. So if they have five tokens, now they have to earn seven and then 10. Um, or you can change your expected behavior. Um, Jackie said it in our, one of our very first slides today, really concentrating on the two main behaviors that you want to focus on then if they are able to do that, that's when you can change that expected behavior or that rule. And then think about the other things then. And we can start targeting or looking at those other things as well. And I think our, that is our last slide for today. Um, we know that your role is a challenge, you know, being a parent and uh, now potentially being your child's teacher is a challenge. And we hope that this video was helpful in helping you maintain your relationship and because we know we, we value your relationship as a parent and that that maintains that relationship between you and your child. Thank you so much. And you. Um, we look forward to hearing more from you all.